He was our first. He was our first king. Hello, everybody. My name is Shane Schmidt, and I am here to tell you about our final project that we. Maybe it hurts very long. Um, <laughs> our company is called Tomiko International. It's a Singapore-based gaming company that's unveiling a new product line of handheld gaming devices called the Gargoyle. This new product will be created in a new division of the company, Pico Play, located in San Francisco, California. The new division will consist of offices on three levels and lease a warehouse. Um, our project requirements are to have Active Directory, main controller, um, routing screen subnets, six total subnets, RAS, a VPN between the DMZ and the warehouse. Um, we're going to create picoplay.priv domain within the Tomiko Forest. Our client resources are mail server, file server, print server, group policy, or group policy and permissions. Um, for backup, we're using RAID 1, business continuity plan, Full and incremental backups, offsite data storage. Our remote installation will be WSUS network ins installation of XP Open Office, CLAM AV, and CLAM WIN. Um, for printers, we have two printers on each floor of the office one in the warehouse, one print server, and print drivers. Good morning, my name is Nate Nolan. I'm here to let you know that we created a Pico Play Priv domain, attached it to a Tomiko <coughs> dot Priv domain, and that created a Tomiko Forest. All right, here's the basic overview of our network. Um, it's a uh, star topology. We're using fast Ethernet um, with a, a screen subnet there on the bottom. We see the DMC server, and Steve is going to talk a little bit about each one of our subnets. Good morning, I'm Steve Phipps. We calculate our subnets for IP addresses ranging from 10.90.48.0 to 10.90.63.255 with a subnet mask of 255.255.254.0 and a CIDR of 23. This gave us eight subnets with 512 hosts each and plenty of room for growth. Subnet 2 is the first floor of the office building. Subnet 3 is the server room. Subnet 4 is the warehouse. Subnet 5 is the second floor of the office building. And finally, subnet 6 is the third floor of the office building. For hardware, um, we utilized an IBM RS6000 mini computer to maintain a customer database that can be accessed by its NetBIOS name. The RS6000 machine does not support WINS, but is able to resolve the NetBIOS names of all the clients that will be accessing the data database. All network client computers will be running XP Pro, and the servers will be running Server 2003. For printers, on each floor, we use two HP Color LaserJet 3000 printers. Um, they're accessible to all employees in the office building for printing. The warehouse will house an HP LaserJet M2727 NF printer that only the warehouse employees can print to. All printers will be managed by the IT staff. Okay, we set up DNS on two internal servers for fault tolerance and assigned a namespace of picoplay.priv. To provide load balancing, one half of our client machines will use one server as the preferred server, and the other half will use the secondary server. The external servers on the screen subnet will provide access to the company's website, picoplay.com. And also, we had to, uh, just to get the whole force together, we had to uh, do name resolution in Tomiko at the beginning. So we had to set up a stub zone in Pico Play that connected over to the Tomiko Forest in order to make the whole forest and connect Pico Play to the domain.
We added WINS to the domain controller and the secondary server to resolve net bias names. We then used static mapping records for the IBM RS6000 microcomputer to allow uh, clients in the customer service, technical support, and sales teams to access that database. At this point, we needed to get some users into the uh, Active Directory database. My name is Daniel Tyser. I handled the uh, batch files. Since we didn't have much time, I just created some batch files to run some CSV files, which loaded all the users groups and all the organizational units inside of Active Directory. Um, that's a picture of one of them. That took a while. Um, we needed to run, uh, also ran a second batch file, which activated all the accounts and put all the passwords on, got everything up and running. Um, we needed to use corporate naming conventions. The required corporate naming convention was for the first letter, last name of all employees. That's to be used for their username. Now, in situations where someone's first name and some, where two people had the same last name and the same first initial, we added the exception, the uh, middle initial. So, we also need to set the passwords. This is the only uh, deviation from the your standard default password policy, we set the passwords to a 10 character minimum to increase security. We configured two DHCP servers to handle addresses for all clients. The warehouse and each floor of the office building have their own unique subnet through use of a super scope. We configure the server options to include NetBT pnode to aid in registering and resolving names to the Win server. For balancing DHCP usage and redundancy, we use the 80-20 rule to divide each scope's addresses between the servers. And then as far as setting up the internal router here, we used Microsoft Server 2003 because it's the best router, Microsoft says. And we also had to set up a relay agent on it so that everybody in each subnet could go to the DHCP server and receive its IP address. <coughs> My name is John Torpy. Um, we set up the RAS DMZ server. Um, the following was what we set up on it. Um, relay agent for DHCP. Um, we did NAT. We did RIP version 2. Uh, we also did remote access for users with a predefined connection, which is the demand, demand dialing connection. We disabled recursion. We used IP filters for remote access. Um, we used IPsec. And we also did remote access quarantine policy for the laptops. 